I've had one of these cheap battery powered soldering irons for a while and I find them quite handy for, for lightweight work. Uh, but I really wanted to do an upgrade because they usually work, run off of um, three uh, AA batteries which go inside. I've been running it off of um, nickel metal hydride um, batteries and, and they only have 1.2 volts per cell whereas like the al alkaline ones which you can use and just throw away well it's a bit kind of wasteful because it gets through the batteries quite quickly uh, they have about 1.5 volts per cell so nickel metal hydride doesn't really give you the kind of power that you, you really need so I up upgraded this one and I've put a, um, a battery and a lithium ion battery in it so one of these batteries and uh, these are one amp hour batteries they seem to drive for a decent period of time but these are 3.7 volts nominal so when you charge them up to full they're 4.2 volts which isn't far off the uh, the standard AA cell alkaline voltage but um, the advantage I think you get with these is they probably have a lower internal resistance than the um, alkaline batteries so I think you get probably just as much power out of these uh, when you're actually using it I, I certainly I haven't noticed uh, any difference so I did this, did this uh, first upgrade and I've been using this for a couple of months and it seems to be fine. Um, so I've got the battery in there and I've got a charger circuit on top. I like these charger circuits where it has a separate battery out and output and an input. I took the two LEDs off this board. So if I look at an unchanged board, so it's got two LEDs up top to show when it's charging and when it's charged. And it's got this um, USB connector on the end, but for, for height reasons, I've taken the USB connector off that end and I've taken the LEDs off and I've put wires on and on the back I can show uh, when it's charging or when it's charged and I've got a, uh, a connector on the back as well um, if I just plug it in quickly hopefully you should just so you can see the red light LED comes on they're not particularly bright because it's only supposed to drive little LEDs on the actual um, on the charger board itself um, but it charges it shows me when it's charged uh, and it, it runs quite nicely. Uh, it's still the usual uh, press and it uh, on the on the standard switch, and it um, starts it up, uh, and just only goes for as long as you press the the actual switch down. So I wanted to do a second upgrade to this, uh, which was to put a temperature controlled circuit in. So this is uh, what I got from the initial design phase of uh, doing the temperature control circuit. Now this, I was trying to make it hopefully with surf uh, with uh, through hole components so that it could actually fit in but no I'm not going to get anywhere near that so I'm going to have to change it to, to surface mount components um, but on, on here I've used a, a little OLED display which you can get easily off of eBay and just a, a switch to do the user interface uh, I've got a, th a thermistor on the back to um, to detect the temperature of the the tip of the soldering iron um, and I've just done this in a kind of stacked way at the minute, so I've got a little bit of circuit in there, so I can read the back, the read the analog to digital converter um, properly. Uh, and I'm going to read. I've got um, I'm pick my controller in here. Um, it's only an eight-pin one. It's a very basic one, uh, but I've adapted it so that two pins, because these are quite good displays, because they only take two pins to drive the display. So on this side of the um, which side is it? Yep, yeah, this side. Uh, two pins drive the LED display, and then one pin does the switch, uh, which leaves me three I/O pins on this side. Uh, so one for sensing battery voltage, one for sensing the temperature of the actual tip of the iron, uh, and the, the the third one is for actually uh, switching on and off the uh, the heater within the actual um, soldering iron tip. Um, so that that actually works out perfectly. And actually, this 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 design, uh, although I've designed it for this soldering iron circuit, actually it, I'm I'm using it in a different design as well. So this is another project I've got. Uh, and then actually, there's a third project which I'm I'm actually uh, this is one that I was using with a same mic control in there. And this was just for experimenting with boost control. But actually, this will suit the uh, the circuit that I've built as well. Uh, and the advantage I get uh, with the circuit I've got, I'll get, I'll get a display which I can display values on. I've got the button for setting things, whereas this boost control, I always had two variable resistors, which I've already started taking off uh, bits of this com this uh, board. Uh, one was for setting the voltage, constant cu constant voltage. One was set for setting the constant current. But with the this new design, which I can just use straight as it is, uh, because it'll... You, know, you have uh, one pin for doing the switching of the um, 
inductor and then two pins for doing volt one for volt sensing and one for um current sensing both analog pins well that's exactly the same as what i'm using this circuit so actually i'm going to be using this circuit in a, a few places uh, so this, this this um one i've actually done some code for and if i power it up um this is actually at a stage where i can actually use it in the soldering iron uh, and it's a simple one button interface uh, i've still got to finish the code off uh, but if you uh, press momentarily uh, it changes whatever you're on if you press um, for a long time it moves the inverted character to the next thing that you can edit and then again momentarily quick presses edits it and then long presses moves to the next thing so you can do do various settings And then this is the standard area where you just it's in standoff mode. You can put it into idle and it counts down and when it times out on the idle it switches off or you can turn it on uh, and it switches um, to idle within so many seconds and then when it switches to idle it then starts counting down the idle uh, and will switch off after a period of time. Um, and if I just get a hot solder iron on, on top of that, on top of the without damaging the battery so I'm going to heat up here and you should see the temperature start to go up it's a 100k um, 100k there starts to go up and they're not exact temperatures I haven't calibrated it yet I haven't got anything which I can calibrate it with um, so I can I can use that to um, switch on and off the, the solder line to temperature control it um, and so but I need to do a surface mount version of the board because obviously this, this board won't fit into that solder iron as it stands and also I've got this second solder iron which I, so I want to make a backup solder iron as well so the next stage is to put together the surface mount thing and I've I've um, actually laid out a circuit design on KiCad and I've just got a print out here of this is, this is actual size of how how big it should be and uh, it's gonna it should hopefully fit within if i get the sword and back it should hopefully fit within there but it's going to be a very tight squeeze um i might have to do some more modifications to the solder iron but hopefully i should be able to get fit fit within the solder iron i've got some uh some of the components i i need to put onto the surface mount board here i've still got to order a couple of components uh, but that's going to be an interesting task actually making this board because some of the track traces are quite narrow uh, and then also um, as putting the surface mount components on a bit if that all goes well um the software has been tested to a degree where it should uh, thermostat thermostatically control the soldering iron uh, but it'd be interesting to see how it all turns out